Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and one of the things that I often do and I try and you know this once again is when you start getting a little more knowledgeable about the hobby about radio frequency propagation uh, daytime nighttime and so on you know we talk about the rules where lower frequencies are usually nighttime frequencies Higher frequencies are usually daytime frequencies, but there's kind of a um, a between both. Of, <laughs> you know, when you're halfway in the sunset, only an hour or two ago, and a signal comes from darkness or daytime. There's kind of this transition zone where sometimes you can be surprised, and even high frequencies can come in. An example of that is when we listen to Radio New Zealand. Here on the East Coast, Radio New Zealand comes in at 04 or 3 or 4 UTC. That's 11 p.m. and midnight here in Montreal. It's darkness. It's been dark for a couple of hours. And 15720 is a high frequency. So you might be thinking, well, how can that frequency propagate in darkness? Well, because a big, big part of the path between New Zealand and here in Montreal is still in daylight. So propagation continues and you know it doesn't end abruptly because it's darkness. It will continue on for uh, a certain amount of distance until it fades out because the ionosphere cannot support it. So I, I give you an example of one that I tried that I tried with my knowledge knowing that there's a possibility that I could hear it. You might have seen my video where I posted the BBC World Service with a pretty good signal um, at, on 12095 kilohertz. So it was 04 UTC, that video, which is midnight local. And here's the, uh, the schedule that I was looking at. And I thought, well, you know what? If there's one that I'm going to try, that's the one from Madagascar Relay. So Relay, remember, when there's a slash, it's because it's relayed from someplace mdg is madagascar and of course the uh target zone is east africa it's not north america so you might think well you know your signal was good how what's the magic it was from madagascar towards east africa i don't see why or how you could have that signal now let's look at the world map here look at madagascar it's madagascar is right here Okay, and East Africa is right here. Okay, East Africa is all of that. And look at North America is here. I'm here, that little house there. That's Montreal. Notice that if you're transmitting from Madagascar to East Africa, you're kind of, you know, sending your signal in my vicinity somewhat. You know, it's not perfect, but it's there. You're sending towards me. It's the same at the daytime when I hear stations like um, Madagascar World Voice with uh, their different programs come you know, often booms in here really, really loud. Well, because the frequency chosen and the time of day and the fact that they're transmitting to West Africa, it's even better for me. West Africa means from Madagascar, we're targeting here. And that continues on the line, straight line up to Montreal. We're in the line where the uh, signal should technically continue. All we hope for is to have a frequency that would actually be able to propagate and continue beyond the target zone. So at midnight, this part here, the daytime here, is now starting to actually get into Africa. So uh, that means that they're starting to have some daytime here, but there's still a lot of darkness. 12095 is one of, uh, it's 25 meters. It's one of those frequencies that, you know, is good both daytime and nighttime kind of. And that transition zone is actually perfect for a uh, broadcast that can continue up to Montreal and be heard. So when you look at EIBI space, look at the target site. Look, look, the transmitter site, sorry, and the target area. And is it kind of towards your direction? Another example is that is Romania. Sometimes we hear Radio Romania's European service. Once again, what's the magic? 
Well, first, the frequency chosen is good. Second, Romania is somewhere here. And it's transmitting to Western Europe, which is here. Well, if you're transmitting from here towards here, you're pretty much in line with, you know, North America once again. So that means if you choose a frequency properly, not only is that target area going to hear it, but there's a chance that I'll be hearing it too. So these are all little things that I look at when I look at a list like EIBI space. I will look at where's the transmitter site, where are you broadcasting to, what are your chances, and what's the frequency also, because that will also impact my, I, my, you know, my decision to maybe try it. And honestly, I've said it so many times, and I have often almost not done it, but I was glad to do it. I always tell everybody, even if you think you'll never hear it, punch in the frequency, it takes a few seconds, try it. You will often be rewarded with some really cool signals. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.